Natural Resources Defense Council, and I want to thank everyone for coming out on this frigid morning. Uh, and I want to extend a special thanks to Stephanie Lowe of the Sierra Club Atlantic Chapter who organized this morning's event. What we have today is a remarkable gathering of elected officials from all levels of government across New York State who have come together with representatives of the state. You must not proceed with allowing drilling into Marcellus Shale for natural gas unless and until you can demonstrate that it can be done safely so that it protects our health, our environment, and our most precious resource, our drinking water. Last Thursday, New Year's Eve, Mark marked the conclusion of the public comment period on the state's draft study for the controversial techniques that would be used in the Marcellus Shale, which are horizontal drilling combined with hydraulic fracturing, which pumps hundreds uh, of millions of gallons of water mixed with hundreds of toxic chemicals into the ground to release natural gas. Unfortunately, following a careful review of that document, it is clear that the state has not yet demonstrated that drilling in the Marcellus can be done safely. So this group today is here to say to the state, stop, start over, and do it right. We can't allow the rush to drilling to put our most precious resource, our drinking water, at risk. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our... our illustrious gathering here. Uh, I do just want to point out there are some elected officials who are unable to attend and who have provided written statements and we can make those available to members of the press. Our first speaker is U.S. Congressman Eric Massa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And to all those gathered on what is one of the most serious subjects we face, please know that many would agree it makes more sense to use clean burning natural gas from domestic sources than to continue to import foreign oil. However, after all is said and done, and when foreign owned drilling companies leave, if we cannot have drinking water, then what we have done will irrevocably destroy the future of New York State. As a harbinger of concern, the state's report highlights the need to protect New York City's watershed and yet opens up the water tables of all of western New York to horizontal hydrofracking. Right. And so those of us who live in western New York ask the question, do we not have to drink the same drinking water from our water table that everyone else in the state has to? Yeah. It's a pretty fundamental fair question. Why two different standards for two different areas of the state? That is why I'm here today. There is nothing more important that I can do as a representative of the people of my congressional district, then protect their drinking water and the heritage of the Finger Lakes for future generations. And that's exactly what I want to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, next we have Congressman Mark Michael R. Curry. Thank you all very much for being here. As uh, Congressman Massa said, there are very few issues that affect all of New York like this. You know, we're very fortunate here in New York that we have so many wonderful natural resources. And clearly, our natural gas is an incredible natural resource. It's phenomenal that we have it here, and we're very fortunate. But we cannot forget that it is, at best, our second greatest natural resource. Our greatest natural resource is our water. And we must never, ever forget about that, especially in times like this, when we see environmental changes taking place in the planet that threaten the water of so many places. We see it not just around the world, but right here in our own country, with limitations on the water out west uh, and in the south. We are very fortunate here in New York to have an incredible water table. We must be sure that we are doing and taking all the steps necessary to preserve it. One more point that I think is critical. We see these companies that come in and they, uh, they, they, they tell us about this great, huge uh, plus that this will be for New York, great economic plus. What they don't tell you about is the fact that this is our water, number one, and number two is the people, they're not hiring New Yorkers to work in these jobs, but rather bringing people in from other parts of the country <laughs> to work in, in mining the gas. So I think these are, the, the, these are issues that need to be studied far more than we have at the present time, and I would strongly urge the government to extend the period for comment uh, because we are not dealing with just any issue, we're dealing with our water. Thank you very much. Woo! Thank you, Congressman. Next we have
Congressman Gerald Nadler. Thank you very much. As uh, uh, Eric and Mike, and Congressman uh, Massa and Congressman Arcuri have said, uh, the prospect of using natural gas instead of foreign oil is a very enticing prospect and a very important one. But it must not be done at the cost of our water supply and at the cost of the environment for New York, which it could upset for generations to come. Um, we are here to say that we are asking that the draft environmental impact statement be withdrawn and a new one prepared because as the EPA commented, the current draft environmental impact statement is simply inadequate. It does not consider all the impacts, it does not examine all the questions that must be examined. In 1975, when the State Environmental Quality Review Act secret was passed, the intent was that nothing should be done with a major impact on the environment until all the impacts were known and you could make a decision and say, taking these risks is worth the benefits or taking these risks is not worth the benefits. And all we're asking is that the intent of the law be followed, that all the risks be known and evaluated so that the people of the state of New York and their elected representatives can make a proper decision. We believe that it is too risky, that it is wrong to subject the water supply, not just of the New York City area, but of the entire state and surrounding area, yeah. 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 severe risks severe risks. Now, it may be, I don't think so, but it may be that after a proper review and after a proper environmental impact statement that looks at everything, we'll conclude that our fears were not justified and we can go ahead with some of this. But we certainly must not proceed until all the questions are asked and answered, all the questions looked at, and a proper environmental review done. That's why we have the environmental laws. That's what has protected us for 30 years. And we must continue in that spirit reject the, withdraw the draft environmental impact statement because it was too narrow, does not look at the proper questions, do a proper EIS, and then we can make the analysis. And in the meantime, do not go forward with this. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Congressman Massa. Thank you, Congressman. Our next speaker is uh, State Senator Tom Dwayne. Senator Dwayne. All right, it appears the Senator was unable to make it, so we've got Assembly Member Deborah Glick. that impacts the entire state. We have for many years talked about the need to preserve our scarce resources. Clean drinking water is one of the most scarce resources on the planet. We are very fortunate that in this country, in most places, we can turn on the tap and be assured that the water is safe to drink and to use for uh, cooking and for bathing. That's not the case in too many places in the world. We cannot run the risk of adding New York State to the list of places where the water is not safe to drink or to use for cooking. So I am here to appeal to the governor to withdraw this draft EIS and to go back to the drawing board and look at real sources, renewable sources of energy and to put our energies into looking at solar, wind, tides, things that are truly safe for us to use and will allow us to move away for, from imported oil. Uh, it's been pointed out to me that all of the state senators are gathered together in Saratoga today. We do have some of their representatives who but before we get to those, I'd like to introduce Assembly Member Brian Kavanaugh. Thanks. Uh, I'm Assembly Member Brian Kavanaugh. I represent a district on the east side of Manhattan. And I'm very uh, proud to be here with such a wide range of elected officials from across our state. And we are all here to, to give one clear message that we are not willing to accept the risks, the unknown risks that are posed to our watershed, not only for New York City, but throughout this state by this kind of drilling. Yeah. This 
is a very, very complicated issue. There's all kinds of complex science and complex industrial processes behind this. My office submitted a 4,000-word analysis of the, uh, the DEC's uh, impact, environmental impact statement just the other day. But let me just boil it down. What the, what the industry is proposing to do is take millions and millions of gallons of water out of our water sources throughout the state, add all kinds of toxic chemicals, pump them into the ground, and then extract the gas, and it's unclear what then happens to the water. What we're saying is we're not willing to allow that to happen until we know where the water is going to come from, what they're going to put in the water, and what, how they're going to clean it up after they're done before they leave our state. Without those things, we cannot be sure that we are not you know, poisoning, poisoning the water for generations to come. One of the reasons this is so complicated is that in, in every other jurisdiction, the in industry has convinced regulators to allow this process to, uh, to occur under tremendous secrecy. There's no information at all available about what is in the water throughout the country when they do this process. There's no information about what the actual impact on the environment is. We are not going to stand for that in New York, and we're not going to allow this to go forward without, without knowing the answers to these questions. Thank you. Thank you, Assembly Member. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce the Speaker of the New York City Council, Christine Quinn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And first, let me recognize some of my council colleagues who have joined us. We have Councilmember Margaret Chin. I want to thank her for being with us, and the Chair of our Environmental Protection Committee, who's been working on this issue for a long time, Jim Gennaro. You know, we in the Council have been incredibly concerned about the prospect of drilling in the watershed or on the shale for quite some time. That's why we've had a series of oversight hearings and passed a resolution expressing our tremendous concern. You know, the city of New York, appropriately, has spent hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars over the years purchasing land around the watershed to protect the watershed and the drinking water of New York City. We cannot now put that taxpayer investment at risk and put our water supply at risk by allowing what the draft EIS would allow to go forward. You know, the Congress member mentioned, and wisely so, that a lot of the jobs that were promised in this great economic revival that somehow this drilling could occur won't even be New Yorkers. Well, there are some jobs that might be held by New Yorkers if this goes through. That would be building the eight to ten billion dollar water filtration plant we'll have to build once our water is no longer drinkable. And let me just say, that's eight to ten billion dollars of taxpayer money we don't have. What we do have is a water supply today that is one of the best out there. What we have today is a will on all parts of the state to protect that water supply. What we need to have is the governor to pull back this draft EIS, stop the process, start over, and only move forward with a process that has as its primary goal protecting our water supply as the most important thing. And I just want to thank everybody who is a part of this growing statewide movement. Where's the governor going? Uh, next, Council Member Jim Gennaro, Chair of the Environment Committee. Thank you. I want to thank the Speaker of the Council, Chris Quinn, in a very special way uh, for uh, making sure that the Council passed this very important resolution and that the Council give voice to this very, very important issue. I'd like to thank all of the elected officials that are, who are here for speaking in such a profound way on this, uh, on this very important national issue. Uh, I'm going to put my chairman's hat aside for a second and speak as a geologist. Let me tell you, this is what happens when you have an abdication by the federal government to regulate something that's really, really important. We have something called the Safe Drinking Water Act. We've had it for 35 years. It does many wonderful things. Uh, there is a part of the Safe Drinking Water Act called the Underground Injection Control Program that regulates when you, you know, inject things into the earth that are made of um, um, uh, hydrocarbons. And, it, and, and, and it's a wonderful program that regulates about two billion gallons uh, worth of stuff every day. But it does not cover hydrofracking. This has been exempted from uh, coverage by the Safe Drinking Water Act. And New York State is the big showdown that is going to turn that around. So what you have uh, is the industry going state by state, convincing regulators to do things that are not in that state's best interest. 
and individual states setting standards that are not sufficiently protective. This is why we have national environmental laws, to set national baseline standards so one state across the river from the other can't whipsaw the other one in a race to the bottom to find out who can put you know, fracking on the fastest track. And so this process is now bumping into New York State and these very motivated public officials and all the advocates that are, that are speaking very forcefully on this issue. A couple of years from now, here's what, here's what we're going to have. We're going to have a situation where this activity is completely covered by the by the Safe Drinking Water Act, uh, and we're not going to have to have these fights. And New York State is really doing a service for the rest of the country. Let me just just uh, diverge one minute on those people who may ask, you know, why is this such a big deal? Gas drilling has been around for a long time. But this is not your mother's and father's gas drilling operation. <laughs> this is not what it's about. Uh, this is about ordinary, under ordinary circumstances. You have a situation where the gas and the oil migrates, uh, into uh, you know softer rock, rock that's porous and impermeable, that you drill straight, straight down, it, 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 it's under pressure, it wants to come out. This is a situation where we're going right into the source rock, that's not porous, that's not permeable, and you're blowing the thing up. So they, I just want to stress that when people ask, how come this is such a big deal? This is not your mother and father's gas drilling operation. This is hydrofracking. This is you know gas drilling Rambo style, and it has to be controlled by the federal government. It has to be regulated by 35 years worth of environmental law, and New York State is the state that is going to make that happen. Now, the Patterson administration, like other administrations throughout the country, have been looking at this, and when you have a state that's in you know dire trouble, as all states are, they they you know, look to these kind of quick fix kind of solutions and they put their natural resources on the table and they make a fool's choice. So we have to inform the Patterson administration that the right thing to do is to withdraw this uh, your DSGEIS and, and you do the right thing by the state. And I have to thank you in a very, very special way. The Bloomberg administration has come forward and put millions of dollars worth of science on the table. It's going to be a very tough haul for, for the state to challenge the science that the Bloomberg, that the Bloomberg uh, administration is put on the table. A round of applause for the Bloomberg administration for 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 doing that, if you will, if you will. Yeah. Next, we have to uh, we have to thank the federal EPA who has who has taken a stand in this. Judith Inc. and 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 and, and, and Regent Du is now lecturing the state on uh, you know how they have to be better about making sure that proper standards are set. But in doing that, EPA, we're just going to turn around and say, EPA, now that you're lecturing states on how to do this, you got to do what you need to do and put this underneath the, the protection of, of the Safe Drinking Water Act. I think EPA has put themselves out in such a way that they can't turn around and just lecture states. They're going to have to make sure that they get this done themselves. I've run on too long on, 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 on this very, very cold day. But this day has been 18 months in the making. Governor Patterson, withdraw the SDGIS, and let's start all over again. Yay! Thank you, Council Member. We've been joined by Assembly Member William Colton. Thank you. You know, this is the kind of issue that we need to learn and remember the lessons from the past. Our water, our air is a precious resource and where we do not treat it the way it should be treated, we end up paying tremendous consequences in terms of health, in terms of environment, in terms of the economy. This is an issue that is very critical, not only for the waters of New York City, but for the streams and the waters of the upstate areas in New York. Yeah. So before we go rushing ahead with some illusion of economic gain, we need to look at what is critical to our environment, to our people, to the well-being of all our people. This SGIS is not adequate. The amount of information that we have on this project is not adequate. We have not adequately considered the impact that it will have in the long term for the health and safety and well-being of the people of this state. And it must be withdrawn, it must be considered carefully, and we must look at not only the immediate days ahead, but the months and years ahead that New York State and its people are going to face if we rush ahead with a project which may endanger the New York City drinking waters, 
and the waters and streams and wells of the people of upstate New York. Right. This is not a local issue. This is a national issue. And I want to commend and more and more of those people who are experts who understand what is happening as they look at this. The city, DEP, has begun to really look at this and they're taking a good stand on it. The EPA is beginning to look at this and is realizing the ramifications of it. And the state government, the Patterson administration, must look seriously at this and recognize the ramifications for the future of all of our families. We are calling upon the SGIS to be withdrawn, to be redone from beginning, looking at all the ramifications, not only in terms of what is in the immediate area, but also in terms of what is possible, that the possible accidents that it could occur, the problems with storage of water, the problems with getting water there and using water, and where is it coming from, the problems of what chemicals are being injected into the earth, and make a really adequate, thorough study before we rush for headlong into this project. We are calling upon the Patterson administration to rethink this very carefully. And when they do, we are convinced that they will recognize that there has to be adequate staffing of DEC, adequate regulation, and an adequate study of the consequences before we even begin to think of starting this kind of a project in New York State. And I'm confident as more and more people become aware of it, more and more people are going to demand that and the will of the people and the voice of the people will be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Assembly Member. Uh, Council Member Margaret Chen. I'm really glad to be here to join with the Speaker of the City Council and elected official from across the state and activists across New York State. We have to let the governor know that we have to make sure that he protects the drinking water of New York State. And today, we're gonna to get the message out to every single New Yorker to pressure the governor that make sure that nothing happens to our drinking water. And we wanna make sure that he listens to all New Yorkers. Thank you. We are joined by former council member Tony Avala. Yay, Tony. Yay. Former council member. I'm that's sorry, council member. No, no, former. That's right. That is right. That is right. I was just kidding. I'm not used to hearing that. Uh, I'll be very quick. It's very cold out here. We would be seriously wrong if we allowed the health of all New Yorkers to be put in jeopardy if we go along with this practice. We have to stand up, whether it's the state senate, the assembly, the city council or the mayoral administration, or the governor. We have to stand up and say, no. It's not about money, it's about people's health. And I stand with all uh, my former colleagues um, to say, no, we're not going to let this happen. Okay, and I think for the, um, our final uh, elected official, we've got a statement being read by Gregory Meyer, who's legislative counsel to State Senator Jose Serrano. Thank you. <laughs> okay, it's really cool, so I'll be quick. Uh, the effects of unfettered natural gas drilling are too great to risk. So we must work together and urge the DAC to provide the necessary oversight to protect our state's most natural resources, and that's why we're all here today. And I thank everyone for being here and for their time. Thank you. Uh, and with, with apologies, um, I'd like to, to welcome Tompkins County Legislator Martha Robertson, who made the long trip down here. And yeah. is certainly most welcome. Thank you for coming. Hey, it's so cold, I gotta tell you. <laughs> it is. And I wanna say, if, if, if it's not safe for New York City, it's not safe for upstate either. times in upstate. Millions of us north of Westchester face the same exact risk. Half the people in my county, including me, get their water from private wells, a hole in the ground. So
So we're scared upstate. Property values are already threatened because nobody wants to buy land with a gas lease or even near one. Leaseholders are horrified that they signed on to something that they knew nothing about. Just in Tompkins County, we expect 5,000 gas wells to be drilled. If there's just a 1% spill rate of the fracking fluids, that's 5 million gallons of toxic chemicals that can be dumped into our watershed. Local governments are overwhelmed by what's coming. For example, the number of truck trips in Tompkins County will go from 1,800 a day, I know that sounds like nothing here, but 1,800 a day to more than 40,000. Our roads aren't meant for that. This will be nothing less than the industrialization of rural New York. Now I have to ask, but even if we had the toughest possible safeguards, is our extract, extracting Marcus Marcellus shale gas the smart thing to do? No. 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 We're, we're told that natural gas is cleaner than coal. So we must sacrifice, so to save the planet, we must sacrifice our backyards and our water sources uh, for the greater good. But is gas really the cleaner fuel? Not if you count all the emissions from extraction and not if you count all the gas leaks in the system. I will tell you that in the Barnell, Barnett Shale in Texas, where the same te techniques are already in use, emissions of carbon dioxide and methane are projected to be roughly equal every day to the greenhouse gas emissions from two coal-fired power plants. Does this make any sense? Right. Drilling the Marcellus Shale may actually increase New York's carbon footprint, not reduce it. Can we afford to proceed without knowing? Governor Patterson, withdraw the DSGEIS. Wait for the EPA studies on the risk of hydrofracking. Have the DEC investigate the true carbon footprint of hydro hydrofracking the Marcellus Shale. The gas will still be there after all these questions are answered. Thank you. Day, uh, to stand together on this issue of such critical importance to our state. Um, I'd like now to turn it over to some of my colleagues in the environmental community and first to President of the Riverkeeper, Alex Matheson. Um, if the state doesn't get this right, then David Patterson may go down in history as the governor who destroyed not only the legendary and irreplaceable New York City watershed, but uh, water, the water supply of communities across this great state. Uh, I don't think he wants that legacy, and we, the people of New York State, are not going to allow him uh, to do that to himself or, most especially, to us. Uh, this hydrofracking technology, when combined with horizontal drilling, is perhaps the most uh, destructive technology that has ever visited New York State. Uh, the DEIS that the, the, the DEC has put together is wholly inadequate, uh, not only in looking at the water supply impacts, but impacts on the environment in general. Uh, the gas emissions issues that were just raised are also very important. We need to know what the net effect in terms of climate change is uh, from, from drilling for natural gas in New York State. Um, I also just want to mention, because no one has mentioned it so far, I think it's worth uh, noting, and that is if gas drilling is allowed to take place in New York State, and that's if, uh, as has been said before, we need to demonstrate that this can be done uh, safely in, in a way that protects the environment and human health and our water supplies. But if gas drilling is allowed to take place anywhere in New York State, it is incredible to me that the governor and the state has not uh, called for an excise tax on gas drilling here in New York State. It's outrageous. Other states are doing it. If we're going to allow anybody to come in to drill for natural gas in the state, the strictest regulations have to be in place across the state. Uh, certain places should be off, off limits altogether, uh, and there should be an excise tax imposed so that we can provide the funding necessary to fully enforce these regulations. Because I can tell you the D.C. is more anemic than it's ever been in its history. Right now, uh, staff uh, resources are down, uh, enforcement uh, staff are down, and if there is not a robust D.C in place with the funding necessary to watchdog every move that the gas and oil industry makes, then we're going to have a, a big disaster on our hands. I'll just say in closing uh, that, the, that the potential uh, damage to the state uh, is, is permanent and catastrophic, and as, as has been said, uh, the oil, uh, sorry, the natural gas which formed over millions of years is not going anywhere. So we call 
on the governor to withdraw this deeply flawed, fatally flawed uh, uh, draft environmental impact statement and to impose a 12-month moratorium on any uh, drilling of uh, uh, this kind uh, across the state of New York. Thank you. Uh, next is Deborah Goldberg, Managing Director of Earth Justice. Yeah. Earth Justice has been working next door in Pennsylvania to combat some of the impacts of hydraulic fracturing that's already going on there. The state is now scrambling because it realized far too late that if it continued business as usual there, under industry estimates of wastewater generation, they would transform every single freshwater stream in the state into a saltwater stream in two years. We cannot let that happen here. We cannot be scrambling to protect our resources after we have let the drilling go forward. Moreover, we are not allowed to do that. That is what our environmental laws are for. We are very fortunate to be required to undertake a serious, methodologically defensible review of the problem before we go forward, if we go forward. It is perfectly clear from the presence of the people here that this is not an upstate, downstate issue. This is not a national, local issue. This is an issue for everyone. The people of the state of New York have spoken against this draft <coughs> in thousands of letters and testimony to DEC. It will take real leadership. It will take real courage and integrity to admit that this document is fatally flawed. cold here. It's 15 <laughs> degrees warmer than my house. Uh, yeah, it was four when I woke up this morning. Two, almost two years ago, Catskill Mountain Keeper, when the landmen started working through the Catskills and we started uh, researching and gas drilling, I was talking to people in other parts of the country and they said, you know, the first thing that's going to happen is your regulators in, our, in your state are going to tell you, we've been dealing with gas drilling for a long time, we have everything under control. That happened. Next thing we knew, there was a bill going through to push and make it easier for the gas drillers to use hydraulic fracking and uh, horizontal drilling. Uh, Catskill Mountain Keeper and a bunch of other organizations got on top of that and got us to where we are now, is going through this supplemental process. The problem is the document that we've been handed is totally inadequate. It's a flawed document. It doesn't do any of the kind of important regulations that need to happen. Governor Pat is a message to Governor Patterson. Governor Patterson, throw this thing out, give us something to work with, and as Deborah just said, this is a national issue. It's time to stop sacrificing energy producing regions of this country. Uh, whether you're talking about coal, gas, oil, the, the story, the history of this country is just trash those places for our excessive lifestyle. That's not what we are going to do anymore. We need in New York to stand up and change that history. co-founder and chairman of NYH2O. Thank you, thank you. Uh, gas, gas drilling, hydraulic fracturing, horizontal drilling is intrinsically contaminated. That's a fact. Um, the SGEIS is um, the best SGIS that industry could buy, as a matter of fact, and, and that's because many believe that industry is the one who produced that 800-page gorilla. Uh, it has to be scrapped and a real environmental impact study must be done. There's people across the country from Texas to Colorado to Wyoming, and in Pennsylvania recently, the battlegrounds are Dimmick and, and Hickory and Dunkard Creek and Stevens Creek where people's water are being poisoned and, and their air contaminated and their lives changed forever. This EIS has to be scrapped. Uh, New York City did a study. The New York City DEP did what's right now the 
most comprehensive, detailed environmental impact study on hydraulic fracturing that's been done any place, anywhere in the country or any place else. And New York State should pay attention to that. And what it says is that hydraulic fracturing poses a catastrophic risk to our water. That's good enough for everybody in the state, and it's good enough for everybody in the country. And the rest of the country is actually watching New York right now. They're waiting to see what's going to happen here, because we seem to be just about their only hope. So everybody's got to get out there and continue to campaign. This, uh, our, our elected officials here and, and our environmental groups are just fantastic. And, um, and, and now we have to go after the Dwayne Brennan Bill and the Frack Act. And, um, and at Sundance, Gasland is now going to hit the screens. And, uh, and, and that's going to let everybody know across the country what's going on with hydraulic fracturing. Thanks. Woo! Thanks, uh, next we have Annie Wilson, who is energy chair for the Sierra Club Atlantic chapter. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Uh, we are here today to let Governor Patterson know that he must do the right thing for our watershed and the people of New York. And that we must consider alternatives. There are alternatives to gas drilling in New York State and the destruction of our water supply and risking our public health. We can look at the efficiency, conservation, and the renewable energy options that are many that have not been exhausted. And so, hopefully, the governor will make the best decision today. I would like to convey a message that a person gave me over the weekend. She was working in a store. She's informed but did not know about the gas drilling issue at all. And she said to me, here it is. The dangerous matter should be in the front page of every newspaper in New York City. That's right. Yep. They are putting people at risk. And so, Thank you, Jennifer Alomar, for reminding me that the general public is not informed and that the press has failed the public on this matter. Our electeds have demonstrated for the first time some type of understanding of what the priorities are on this environmental issue and have worked and joined with the environmental organizations regarding this matter. But in general, the media must do much better at conveying what's important to our public and not be so obsessed with the celebrity culture. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you, Annie. Uh, we have two more statements and then we'll, we'll take some questions. Uh, so next I'd like to welcome Michael Lebrun of Damascus Citizens for Sustainability. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out here. Uh, one of the things the uh, gas industry likes to say is that there's been no demonstrated instances of people's water being polluted by their activity. But right now in the village, just 40 minutes south of Binghamton, New York, uh, the village of Dimmick, there are two dozen families who are without uh, the drinking water from the water wells that they used to take for granted. Damascus Citizens is trying to organize a drive to get them water until they can get the uh, relief that they need, and you can uh, help them out by going to our website at DamascusCitizens.org. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. And last but not least is Tom Syracuse with Manhattan Greens. Yay! Uh, I also um, belong to the Committee for Environmentally Sound Development uh, on the west side of Manhattan, and I'm also the chair of the Manhattan Greens. Uh, no, uh, I remember going to the only hearing they had here in New York City, what was that, a couple months ago? And uh, I heard a lot of speakers uh, just saying that uh, we should protect the New York City water supply, and nothing was said about protecting the entire state's water supply. But public opinion is growing. The more the public realizes what a disaster hydrofracking will be, the more the politicians are beginning to change their position. But even today, I hear a lot of people saying that what we need is more studies uh, to find out if hydrofracking could be done. Well, the Green Party has this position. We should have a permanent ban on hydrofracking throughout the country. <laughs> 
We have a lot of evidence, as was uh, pointed out by a, a previous speaker, what hydrofracking does in Colorado, in uh, Pennsylvania, and other <laughs> states. It ruins the water supply and contaminates the environment. And there's plenty of evidence. We don't need any more studies. And so we hope that the public will become more and more aware, as the public becomes more and more aware of this, we will completely scrap the idea of hydrofracking for gas. Why do they want to do it? To make, to make a lot of money. The energy companies, that's why they're in this. They're, as usual, they're putting their profits ahead of, the, uh, ahead of the welfare of the American public. And this has to stop. Not only with hydrofracking, but with the use of all fossil fuels. We have to get off fossil fuels in order to avert a worldwide uh, environmental catastrophe. Thank you. I have been asked to read one statement from Assemblymember uh, Richard Gottfried, who's chair of the Assembly Committee on Health. Oh, would you like to? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wendy Pastor will be reading for the Assembly. Come on. I'm sorry that he couldn't be here today to join you. Uh, I read a statement by him. Natural gas drilling in the near watershed will endanger the water supply of more than half the state. We know there have already been pollution, pollution incidents in hydraulic fracturing operations. This is colossal madness. At the very least, the draft environmental impact statement must be withdrawn and redone to fully take stock to the danger to life, health, and the economy of the region and to fully evaluate the alternatives. statement. I guess this is a testament to the uh, extreme importance of this issue to New Yorkers across the state. Uh, Joel Kupferman with the National Lawyers Guild. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, definitely oh. confirm and affirm the statewide ban. And I just want to represent the ghost of 9-11. I've been at many, many press conferences here. And I just want you people to remember, and we should all remember, that it took us a long time to find out the facts. They told us the air was clear and fighting and fighting and fighting and only after we fought did we find out the truth. And one of the worst culprits in all of that was New York State. When we foiled the city and the feds as to the air quality, they gave us that information. The state took 85 days on the excuse that it was an ongoing criminal investigation and they couldn't release that critical information. What do you think when there's going to be an explosion or an accident at any of these well sites? New York State DEC is probably going to tell us there's an ongoing investigation. So we have to remain vigilant in all of this. And also, I don't like the idea that divide and conquer. There's a statement here from the Onondagas Nation and the Iroquois Confederacy saying that they're opposed to the, the, the drilling, that they've been drilled before up there and they've lost their water. So we're told down here after 9-11 that the air stopped the bad air stopped right on Canal Street in the East River, and we're saying the bad drilling doesn't stop at the New York City watershed, but continues throughout the whole state. Thank you. So thanks again to all of our elected officials and all of our speakers uh, this morning, and I guess I'll open it up to any questions. Yeah, this is sorry. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the press? Okay, well, thank you all for attending this morning. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. <laughs>